Now let me give you an example. Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu he came 1,400 years ago. And I want to ask you this and I want you to tell me what you think before I give you the, this information. Do you agree with me that the person who claims to be the messenger of God, he, he's one of two things. He is either the biggest liar out there or he is the most truthful person. There's no third option. You agree with me? If you claim to be a messenger, yes, either you're the biggest. Yeah, because if you lie about God, then you're the biggest liar, liar out there. You're lying about the creator. And if you don't, if you're not lying and God chose you, then you're the most honest person because God chose you. So do you think, don't you think it's an easy thing to differentiate between the most honest person and the biggest liar? Yeah, I feel is it easy to. Yes. Isn't it easy to tell yeah, who is the you, biggest liar? Well, yeah, yeah. If, you, if you're a liar, you eventually will be found out. Absolutely. So it's easy to find out who the biggest liar is. It's not hard to say this guy is the biggest liar and this. So when you study the biography of Prophet Muhammad, you will be able easily to find out if he was a liar. There's no doubt about that. Because you look at his life and you will see from his behavior, this guy must be a liar. And that's why we saw all the false prophets throughout history. They were always found out. They lied so many times. And people found out they lied. They died in the worst of places. They made so many claims. They said, God told me this. And then in the end, it, it never happens. Because these people are liars. So it's, it's not hard at all for someone to find out who's a true messenger and who's not. All you have to do is to look at his life, to look at what he's doing in his life. Now, looking at the life of Prophet Muhammad, okay? If you look at the life of Prophet Muhammad, you will know that it, there is no doubt that he's a messenger of God. He's a truthful individual. And I'll give you a few examples. The first thing I want to say is that Prophet Muhammad, he lived among his people for 40 years. So it's not like he stayed two days amongst the people. And at that time, there was no social media. So people actually know, knew other people. You knew the people in your neighborhood, you know? You knew their names. You used to meet them almost on a daily basis. You used to trade with them. People knew people. You know what I'm saying? It's not like today. Today is social media. Everyone is isolated. No, but that back then, people actually knew the people in their neighborhood they actually knew you as an individual if you're a liar everyone knows you're a liar yeah because people deal with you on a daily basis you there's no internet there's no technology people are dealing with dealing with you on a daily basis prophet muhammad lived with his people for 40 years his people gave him two names two titles they called him as sadiq al amin they called him as sadiq al amin the trustworthy the honest can you imagine? He lived amongst his people. He didn't call himself that. People called him that. Because when they dealt with him, they always knew this guy is the most, most honest person out there. He's the most trustworthy person out there. When they traveled, they left their belongings with him. They knew that when they, came, they come back, they will find their, their stuff. He's not, nothing will happen to our stuff. When they had disputes, they used to go to Prophet Muhammad والسلام, to solve any disputes that happened amongst them. Okay? So this was his kind of biography among the people. He was known to be the most trustworthy, the honest person. Then he came to deliver the message of God. What did he call the people to? He called the people to worship God alone. He said to the people, do not overpraise me. Do not overpraise me. Do not, he didn't say to the people, do not worship me. Do not worship human beings. Do not worship idols. Do not worship pictures. Worship God alone. Be good to your neighbor. Be just even if it was against yourself. Even if it was against your family members. When you're trading, always be just with the people. Do not steal from other people. Do not take anything away from other people. And he was the person who's not looking for anything that is worldly. He's not looking for money. He's not looking for fame. He's not looking for women. The people in his community, they came and they offered him. They said, stop calling people away from idol worship because they were idol worshippers. And we'll give you, we'll make you our leader. If you want women, we'll give you women. If you want money, we'll give you money. If you, whatever you want, you name it, we'll give it to you. But Prophet Muhammad refused. He said, do you see the sun? Bring me some of a bit of the sun and then I will stop doing what I'm doing. Basically, say, I'm never going to stop because this is for the sake of God. And I'm not looking for worldly things. And that's why Prophet Muhammad lived his life. The, uh, his wife, she, she said, he used to spend three months with only living on dates and water. And he was in Medina. He was the leader. He could have said, oh, you look, you're my follower. Give me some money. And you give me money. You give me money. And he lives in the biggest palaces out there. But Prophet Muhammad lived the simplest of, of life, which shows that this man is a, is a person who's sincere was honest he's not lying one day the son of prophet muhammad died he was called ibrahim and an eclipse happened the people said look this is evidence that he's a messenger of god because the eclipse happened when his son died if prophet muhammad was a liar the first thing he's, he's going to say is yes yeah, of course this happened because of me isn't it wouldn't wouldn't a liar say that of course a liar would say yeah, yeah, yeah this happened because of me i'm a messenger of god but prophet muhammad said no 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 this does not happen for the life or death of anyone this is a sign that is one of the signs of god when you see it rush to mentioning god Rush to praying to God. Thank God. This is a sign of God. This is not happening because of 
the death of my son or anyone. This is happening as a sign of the creator, just like everything in the universe is a sign of the creator. So this was the life of Prophet Muhammad. Prophet Muhammad spent 13 years in Mecca being persecuted. He was from the most noble uh, tribes. When he started calling people to Islam, everyone was against him. Everyone was trying to kill him. Everyone was trying to persecute him. Imagine you from being the most noble person, the, the person beloved by the people, the person called the honest, the trustworthy. When you start calling people to God, now everyone is against you. If you're a liar, you're going to say, okay, I'm going to stop calling people to God now because I, I was in the best places already. I was respected by the people. I was ma uh, I'm married to a rich woman, one of the richest women. So I don't need money. I don't need status. I'm, I'm from the best of lineages. So why would I turn everyone against me just to tell them worship God alone? And stay away from idols if I'm a liar. No liar would ever do that. No liar would spend 13 years of his life being persecuted by the people to call people to worship God alone. To say to people, stay away from worshiping idols. Be just. Do not steal. Do not do this. Do not do that. Only worship God. Only do everything for the sake of God. Do you think, and be honest with me, X, yeah? Do you think a liar would do something like this? Hmm. Um, I don't, I wouldn't see the, like, if a lot, okay, if someone is a liar, it would be easy for them to just go with the the women the riches so why would a Absolutely. person choose not to when they would just love why would someone choose to be hated mm -hmm. unless it's a good reason to so yeah that yeah that would be i don't see why because it seems like a liar would be a person who's trying to sneak around things so they wouldn't want to cause any like attention upon themselves absolutely absolutely and you know what if you're a liar prophet muhammad made so many predictions about the future if he's a liar he will never gamble like this because if he's a liar and he says this will happen and it doesn't happen then everyone will know he's a liar but prophet muhammad made tens of predictions some of them in his life and some of them are even happening today we see them with our own eyes for example the roman and persian empires they were fighting each other at the time of prophet muhammad the persians defeated the roman empire now prophet muhammad came and he made a claim even though the roman empire was almost decimated they took over damascus they took over antioch they took over jerusalem which was the, the holy city of the roman empire because it was a christian empire and it was where Jesus is born and everything. So the historian said this was the demise. This is the end of the of the Roman Empire. If you read the letter that the, the, the Persian king sent to the Roman king, he called him a dog and he said surrender and this and that. He, he, it was the end of the Roman Empire in the eyes of everyone. But then Prophet Muhammad came and against all odds, he said that the Romans have, uh, he said the Quran, he recited the Quran and he said, God told me that the Romans have been defeated, but they will defeat the Persians. And he gave a time. He said in three to nine years, the, uh, the, the, the Romans will defeat the Persians. And he said it will happen in a, in a nearby land. And that's exactly what happened. The Romans defeated the Persians after seven years. Exactly. So if you're a liar, would you ever make this claim? Would you put the whole religion? And you know what, Prophet Muhammad, the Quran says, the Quran says this is the promise of Allah. And Allah does not break his promise. Imagine I'm a liar. I'm not only making a prediction. I'm saying maybe this will happen. No, no, I'm saying this will happen. And this is the promise of God. And God does not break his promise. No one will ever be this confident, if, except if he's actually a messenger of God, that he knows for a fact this will happen. There was the uncle of Prophet Muhammad. I'll give you another example. The uncle of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he was called Abu Lahab. And Abu Lahab, he used to be a disbeliever and he used to persecute the Prophet Muhammad. Prophet Muhammad walks, they put thorns in the, his wife and him, they put thorns in the street. So he so they try to harm him in the road. Whenever Prophet Muhammad goes, he preaches the message to someone. His uncle is behind him. He comes to him. He says, what did Muhammad say to you? He says, he said to me this and this and that. He said, don't believe him. He's a liar. And then he starts telling him the opposite. He starts warning people away from him. He, try, he tries to persecute him and be violent against him. So this uncle of Prophet Muhammad, that was all his life against Prophet Muhammad. The Quran came down and said, Abu Lahab, which is the uncle of Prophet Muhammad, will die as a disbeliever. This is a prediction. Not only him, but also his wife. The Quran made a prediction about Abu Lahab and also his wife. Because a lot of people talk about this prediction, but they forget to mention the wife. So Prophet Muhammad said that Abu Lahab and his wife will both die on disbelief. Now, if I was Abu Lahab and I hate Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and I want to disprove his message, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to come and say, okay, I accept Islam now. And if I say that, I disprove Islam. Because if I accept Islam, I'm not going to hellfire. But your book is claiming I'm going to hellfire. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So Abu Lahab had the chance to disprove Islam by just saying I'm a Muslim. Because the minute he becomes a Muslim, him or his wife, now Islam is disproved. Because Prophet Muhammad said that he will die as a disbeliever and he will go to hellfire. So if he says, okay, you know, I'm a Muslim, I accept Islam. Now your religion is false because you claim that I will die as a disbeliever and I accept Islam now. So if he hate him, this would be the best way for him to disprove his religion. But what happened? Nine years later, so this, this prediction Nine years, Abu Lahab and his wife, they didn't accept Islam and they died as disbelievers, just like the Quran says. And now I'm giving you 
just two predictions. Prophet Muhammad made tons of predictions. Some of them are happening today. Like Prophet Muhammad said, you will see the barefoot Bedouin Arabs competing and building the tall buildings. Do you know where is the tallest building in the world today? Oh, the tallest. Oh, uh, where? Uh, China? If or no, no, it's in Dubai. The Burj Khalifa Dubai. in Dubai. Yes, Burj Khalifa is the tallest building in the world. Now, Prophet Muhammad said 1,400 years ago, the Arabs would be competing in building the tallest buildings. So not only that he's making these predictions that I'm telling you in his time, that he's making the predictions of things that are happening today and we see them in front of our eyes. Now, I want you to be completely honest with me, X. After everything I told you about Prophet Muhammad, how he lived his life, how he interacted with the people and everything that happened in his life, right? Would it be possible to say that after all of that, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is not a real messenger. Not only all, everything that I told you, all of these events that happened in his life, but also the predictions that he made about the future. Can you be a false prophet and do all of that? Is that possible? But, but can I get to this point? Because this is something I really want to, because you ahead. made a lot of points and it's like- I hey, Yeah, yeah, I did, I did, I did. Go ahead, go ahead. This was go another ahead. like conflict I had, because I was like, okay, now, okay, I believe that there's a creator. So it's like out of the three religions, I've been like researching about a lot of them and, and it's like, okay, you show, you said all the examples of like the evidences, but how do I know, like out of these, they all three Abrahamic religions, right? And they all claim to be the truth. And what I see, it have some commonalities and some none, but Judy, all right. So Judaism was supposedly like the first and then Christianity and Islam agree with some of the, pro well, I guess most of the prophets, right? Is that correct? I know Christianity does, but does Islam agree? Yes, yes. Yes, we I know y'all agree with most of the prophets and a lot of the prophets. Yes, most of them, yes. But y'all wouldn't say y'all agree with the Tanakh what it is fully today. Okay, to answer that point, I want to tell you this. Keep something in mind, right? We don't say Judaism is first as Muslims. Uh, we say a Muslim is someone who submits to the one true creator, to the one true God. And that's why we say Islam was always there from the beginning. Islam was there from the beginning. The first human being, Adam, was a Muslim because he submitted to the creator. And God has given him guidance, right? So we don't, we don't, we disagree with this idea that Judaism was first. So that's the first thing that I would say, right? The second thing I would say is that we believe that Moses is a messenger of God and Jesus is a messenger of God. And we believe that they got messages from the creator. They got revelation. They got books from the creator, right? And these Wait, revelations I, that they I got. Can something about that? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. You, you said that Judaism wasn't the first. So do, is the belief that. So what was the religion of that time? Was it like no specific religion? Was it just like a belief system? Like it wasn't like like a literal like religion? A limit, it was Islam. That's what we say. We say Islam was there from the beginning, from the time of Adam. And Islam means submission to God. The practices were different. So God used to give different practices based on the people on the time. So like if the people at this time require these type of practices, God gives it to them. If the people requ require different types of practices, God gives them different types of practices. So sometimes what we call Sharia, ah, which is the practice, religious practice was sometimes different. The beliefs was the same. Okay. And I will give you an example that will simplify that for you. You know, Abraham, what religion was he? I would say he didn't have a religion. I would just say he was a follower of God. Okay. So he cannot, but he cannot be Jewish or, or Christian, can he? Because there was no Jesus, there was no Torah, there was no Moses, there was no Judah, there was no Jacob even yet. So it's impossible. That if there's no Torah, there was no gospel. True. He cannot be Christian, right? Or Jewish. Make sense? 100%. Do you agree that Abraham submitted fully to the creator? You know the story. God told Abraham to slaughter his own son. There is no more submission than this to, to, to obey God's command. You, you're very old in age and God gives you a gift, which is a son. In this old age that you never expected to have a son. And then God says to you, go and slaughter your, your son. Now, don't you agree with me? This is the highest level of submission to God. Yes, uh, yeah, that's the highest. Because I feel that's a person would take themselves, but they take their own child. Absolutely. And that's what Islam is. Submission to the one true God. Submission to the God of Abraham. Submission to the God of Noah. So that is the evidence that for us to say that Islam was there first. The same beliefs that we have today are the same beliefs that Abraham had about God. Even the practices that Abraham says Muslims keep, but other religions don't keep. Like, for example, uh, circumcision comes from Abraham. Muslims practice it. Okay, a lot of Christians today, they don't practice it. You get the point. Some Jews, Jews, they do practice it. But most, a lot of Christians don't. So if you look at, at, at Abraham, he was not a Jew or a Christian, which shows you that, look, this idea of Islam being there has evidence. Islam being there before because all of these other religions they're linked to a specific individual or linked to a specific country and uh, they have a starting point from there either from Moses Judaism or from Judah or from Jacob whatever you or from Isaac whatever you want to start it but it has a starting point while Islam submission to the one true creator is not linked to an individual or or a specific city right now and and on top of that 
we are saying we agree with the, those people who were messengers of God and they brought their messages. But those messages have been changed. So you don't have an original Bible today. You don't have an original Torah from the time of Moses today. Even Jews and Christians would agree with that. But we have the preserved Quran from the time of mm. Prophet Muhammad. And why wasn't it preserved? It's because it wasn't preserved because it was not for everyone. It was not a universal message and it was not forever. It was specific for specific people for a specific time. That's why God he gave the message... That was yeah. my conflict, though, with the like with the Torah, like how it was just specific to Jews. It's like if you're not an Israelite, you kind of feel like yeah. I'm just an NPC player or something. Like I'm not like I'm just you're a goy, some... which is which is a very derogatory term. You know, you're yeah. you're not an Israel. You're not from the chosen people of God and this and that. You know, that's why you don't see the Jewish people going around trying to practice to preach the religion because they, 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 they don't believe uh, people most of them don't believe that someone can become jewish anyway and if you do they have this long very long process some people say seven years process they watch you are you observing the laws or not if you're observing the laws okay now you can become jewish and when you become jewish you're not a first class jew because there are different la ranks and classes in judaism not all jews are, are, are equal so that the, the ashkenazi jews will look down upon other jews like the hariji jews for example in yemen because these people are you know what darker skin and this and that there is there is even racism within the, the 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 belief system system itself you understand what i'm trying to say or there's the, the differentiation within the belief system itself so even within judaism so judaism is not welcoming you anyways because they're not opening doors and asking you x come and follow a religion you know so you can put judaism to the side when it comes to christianity do you think it is rational and it makes sense to claim that a human being is god and he comes and he dies on a cross he's killed by his own creation he used to be breastfed by his own mother. Does does these things make sense to you? No, and that's my exact conflict with Christian. I came in a okay. Christian family, and that was my exact conflict with Christianity. It's like believing that why would God become a man? And then it's like, Absolutely. but Jesus prayed to God. And Absolutely. It's like, yeah. So it's like Christianity, I, I always felt like, like that's why it, to me it was either Islam or Judaism. That's why I always, and Judaism what made me, like, I don't know. I Like, it's something with, like, I don't know. I always felt. Islam in a way, but it's like for some reason I don't like it's just so it's just, uh, the some reason it, I told it, you before. I feel like it makes sense, but I don't know. The same the, the reason that is stopping you, I told you before. Satan, no other reasons. Because look, something makes perfect sense to you. Okay, it's rational, it's evidence-based. We know as an objectively looking at the life of Prophet Muhammad, and, and I only give you one evidence, I can give you many more evidences why he was a messenger of God. One or two evidences, his life and the predictions that he made. There are many other things that he performed that proves that he's a messenger of God. But I'm telling you, looking at this objectively, don't you agree with me from a rational perspective that this has to be then the truth? It's the or it is the only thing that is making See, sense to you. Like the belief system makes sense to me. I want to before I can claim the truth because like I like to be in with. I want to because I have two Qurans. My mom randomly <laughs> gave me a Quran one time, and I had a <laughs> uh, I bought a I bought a Quran before the Oxford translation, and um, I just have a lot of. I'm trying to. Stu I plan on. I want to read it fully because the beliefs out of all the belief systems, just based on if I'm not going by what the actual holy text. If I'm just going by belief, the Quran, the Muslim belief makes more sense to me out of all of them logically. So mm -hmm. what I just want to do now is read the whole Quran and and um learn and keep studying and having conversations like these. Cause I'm not around Muslims, so I, I keep hearing bias because I'm just around Christians, so I keep hearing biased mm -hmm. opinions. So I never can have a mm -hmm. conversation with Muslims to actually fully get the truth from mm -hmm. Muslims themselves because people here in America is biased towards Islam and I try to be fair but it's like yeah absolutely absolutely and 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 that is that is a sign of sincerity so I would say to you it's a sign of sincerity where you where it shows that you're a, a critical thinker a critical thinker you're not someone who just believes things that are in the media other people are telling you about oh the, these people believe it therefore i will believe it no you're actually using your mind you know which is unfortunately a lot of people are not doing yeah i mean what can we do you know yeah, but you're using you're using your mind right you're people to, think life yeah. black and white uh -huh. absolutely but there's gray isn't it it's not as black and white as people look it's gray <laughs> that is actually not as black and white as people think it is right there is a lot of things that yeah. people need to think about right so what i'm saying is this all i can do is is to do what i did right now i gave you the logical evidences for islam and i give you the logical message and as you agree with me it makes rational sense that's i put the ball in your court basically that's all i can do because i believe that god is the one who guides 
And I make say I understand what you're saying that you want to read and this and that is no doubt there is no problem. I'm the last person who tries to push someone like to accept Islam. Maybe I did that before, which but I I don't do that anymore, right? So I don't try to push someone to accept Islam, even though I'm even if I used to push him, I used to push him for his own good. But I'm not doing that anymore. You get the point. I don't push someone to accept the uh, uh, the message, even though I only push them when they agree with it. Like when they say to me, okay, that everything makes sense. So I say, what's stopping you, man? Just accept, you know? So, but right now I will let you take your time. I will let you study. I'll let you do whatever you want to do. And look, I, look, you, you see my channel. You can go to my email. You want to talk another time. You want to ask questions. Whatever it is, I'm happy. But I gave you the holistic message, right? So now you know the holistic message. You know why we say Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God. You know why Judaism and Christianity is not uh, an option for a rational, honest person. He's not going to go to Judaism or Christianity. And you know why you should go towards Islam. Read the Quran and, and tell me which, DM me or email me, either DM me on Twitter or email me which translation of the Quran are you reading? Because some translations can be problematic from crazy people that translate the Quran. Sometimes even Orientalists or not Muslim, they translate the Quran. So send me with just the name of the translation. Most of them are good, but just send me the name of the one that you're using. So I just confirm. Have you ever you heard of the read. Oxford one? The don't read the haha. This is the one you shouldn't read. No. <laughs> That's why I was asking, you know, because this is this is the one from those no. uh, acad orientalist academics that they, they try to do liberalized version of their own version of Islam, right? They're not even Muslims are doing this stuff, right? Don't read that one. Don't read that one. Absolutely not. Do you, what is the other one that you have? One. What do you remember um, the name? It's or no? called, I, I think it's called the message of the Quran. If I'm correct, I think it's called the message of the Quran. I don't know which one. Send me, please send me a, a picture or something like that. Because I'll tell you which ones you can get. There's so many good ones. Like, like there's, there's so many that uh, the ones that are not problematic, yani, but most of them are not, but some of them are. And, and people who are in a non-Muslim countries, they end up with the bad ones. Because the people giving them away, they're trying to push forward the bad idea of Islam, you know? You send me, just DM me, either on Twitter or email me and let me know which translation you're reading. I'll give you my best suggestion. I'll give you maybe two or three uh, translations that I think are the best. And you read the one that you like, yeah? Okay. Uh, and, and then any questions, just come and ask, you know? Uh, come For and sure. ask. And yeah, good question you have. Time, uh, oh, like, okay. Because I, I barely get time. No problem, no problem, no problem. Yeah, I'm happy to to talk to anyone, you know, anyone who's sincere, who's honest, who's trying to learn the truth. I'm happy to talk to them, you know, uh, I have no issues with anyone, you know. OK, I'll, I'll let you go. Or do you have any other questions for me? Oh, uh, that was it. I, um, thank you. I like your videos, man. Like what really draw me to your I just want to say what really draw me to your channel was I like how you uh, your debating skills, because like you're a logical thinker. Like I can tell that you are also a logical thinker. And I feel like that's missing in a lot of other religions. So that's another thing what I respect about Islam. Well, it's just, it's just, it's not me. It's just that, I, that I'm saying the truth, you know, and the truth makes sense. And, and uh, it's Islam is the only religion that will satisfy your heart and your mind, not just your heart, but your mind as well. Not just your emotions of being loving and all of this stuff. God died for you and all of this. No, no. Not just emotions and personal experience. It will also satisfy your mind. So it will give you complete satisfaction. Basically, nothing else will give you complete satisfaction. So what you see is just uh, the truth. You don't see, I'm not doing anything. All you see is just me transmitting the truth. So it is God is the one who's given us this truth. And this truth will appeal to you because inside you, you have what we call the fitra. It's an innate disposition that tells you where the, where the truth is and where falsehood is. So when you hear the truth, you know deep down, this is the truth. Because God has put that in you already, right? That's why it makes sense to you what I'm saying to you. Trust me, if I was a Christian, I'm not going to be able to convince you of the charity, you know? doesn't matter how logical I am. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to, to say, okay, oh, therefore the charity makes sense. Oh, he's gone. I think maybe it's the connection. Uh, he's gone. He had a bad connection. But alhamdulillah, he's going to, inshallah, read the Quran and everything. And as I said to you, X, if you uh, just email me the name of the translation that you're uh, reading. And anytime you have questions or anything like that,